Hello and welcome. We're going to talk today about Caledonia mining, very much present in Africa, as you're about to find out. And here to tell us about the company is their Vice President of Business Development and Investor Relations, Mark Learmonth. Welcome. Hello. Let's start off with a, a kind of general question about the company. But first of all, let's talk about listings. You are listed on the AIM market, but you're listed on other markets as well. Yeah, we're a Canadian company, so you know, it, it makes sense for us to be listed on the Toronto Exchange. We, we've been there for a long time. Uh, we're, we're listed on the AIM market in London, and we're also SEC registered, which means our shares are capable of being traded in the States. Uh, and so what we did uh, about 18 months ago is we upgraded our bulletin board listing and we're now, we're now traded on the OTCQX in, okay. in the States as well. So that's the listing. Let's talk about where you operate and what your operations involve. Kind of gives it away, Caledonian mining, but we're talking gold in the first instance and we're talking Africa. Yeah, well, the name actually, Caledonia Mining, refers to a, a tiny, tiny, tiny uh, gold exploration license we have in Scotland, but that's not something that's actually we, we, we do anything with. Over the last uh, five or six years, we've we sort of boiled the focus of the business down. Uh, so now we focus on the blanket gold mine in Zimbabwe, which is a lovely little gold operation. And then we also have what we call the Nama Base Metals Project, which is in Zambia. How are each of these operations going? Let's start with the blanket gold mine. And here, I'm sure our audience really want to hear about cash costs, uh, your cash position, and probably quite a lot about future developments, but let's start on the cash. Well, the Blanket Gold Mine in Zimbabwe is, has been running for about 100 years. Um, we, we bought it from Kinross about uh, six or eight years ago. Um, and what we've done under our, our, under our ownership is we've, we've increased the production rate from, from Blanket. It was running at about 20,000 ounces a year. We've now increased it to about 40,000 ounces a year. In July, we did 4,600 ounces, which you know, is, a, is a run rate is, is sort of way above 40,000 ounces a year. So we've increased production to, to a reasonable amount. And also, more significantly, what we've done is we've brought our cash costs down. So uh, in early 2010, our cash costs were running over $800 an ounce. Uh, in the quarter to the end of June, our cash cost was just a shade under $550 an ounce, which if you compare us to the other African gold producers, big ones and small ones, people like Pan-African or even the big guys like African Barrick or Anglo Gold, you know, we're way at the bottom end of the, of the cash costs, which is fantastic given the current uh, gold, gold price. That means that we're making good money. We're going to talk about growing future production, but I'm going to park that for a moment because I think that's very tied up with my next point, which is about well, the political situation in Zimbabwe. It's not the easiest place to operate, but specifically this indigenization process whereby high-profile companies like yourselves in the mining sector and other sectors are having to effectively hand over 51% of the, of the, of the well, ownership yeah, let, let, to let me just Let me just pick you up on, on, a, on a very important point there. 51% is the indigenization target, but there's no question we have not handed over 51%. And there is, there is a fairly common misconception that 51% is being grabbed or, or is being sort of partially nationalised. We've structured a transaction whereby we are selling 51% of Blanket, which is the Zimbabwean, Zimbabwean mine, to a range of entities. 16% uh, is being sold to the uh, Zimbabwean um, sort of government sovereign wealth fund. 10% is being sold to our workers. 16% has been sold to uh, a group of, of, of indigenous Zimbabweans. The only bit that's been given away is 10% to the community. And, you know, in the context of, of getting community buy-in to the local operations, a 10% donation to a community is something that we're very comfortable doing and we think is actually, in, in, on a policy basis, is, is the right thing to do. So there's no question of 51% being given away. 51% is being sold for value and over a period of time we will recoup the, um, the sale proceeds. But let's complete the kind of circle in Africa at the moment and go across borders now and let's move over to Zambia and there we're talking about base metals uh, we're talking about the Nama project there and really I, I guess one of the questions people outside including analysts are sort of saying is when are you going to be able to show a maiden resource there? Well we've had some very encouraging drill results coming out of Nama uh, which we've reported uh, in the last few weeks um, we've got We've got the money and we've got the, the, the exploration program is, is already, the drilling program is, is already continuing with a view to uh, increasing our competence level of the, of the resources that we've identified, increasing the size of the resources we've identified. And our expectation would be that sometime, perhaps in the first half of next year, we should be able to come out with a maiden resource on the NAMA project. We don't, we're in a very fortunate position of, of not needing to raise money all the time. So we don't need to keep on um, putting out 
what, drill results which will by their very nature potentially be quite misleading because they're not, they're not reflective of the whole ore body. So we're in the, we're in the position as, which the majors are in, of being able to continue a, a sustained and, um, and well thought through and comprehensive exploration program so that we can then come back to the market with a clear view as to what we've got and not run the risk of getting people excited about you know, things that may potentially be misleading or misrepresentative. So we've got that in place, it's, it's on its way, and we would hope to get some sort of resource statement out there you know, first half next year. So, final question, and this is your chance really to explain what are we going to see from an investor point of view, but also from your own business's point of view in the next coming months uh, and possibly even years, both in Zambia and in Zimbabwe. Well, I would expect to see continued strong operational and financial performance coming out of the blanket gold mine in Zimbabwe. Um, early next year we should start seeing some modest incremental production coming through from the satellite projects that, that we've already started work on. And then as we, as now that we're indigenized, we, we're able to, to take longer term uh, views about the, the downward extension of blanket, we should be able in a position to start talking to the market about how we can address those deeper level resources at blanket that we know we've got. So that, that deals with blanket. At Nama in Zambia, we have already started our, our sort of second phase uh, drilling program, uh, building on the work that we've done in the first half of the year. And we sh we, we're in a position to move towards a, a proper resource statement, which will take as long as it takes, but we would expect something, say, in the first half of next year. And once we've got a resource statement, we'll then be in a position to work out how best to commercialize whatever it is that we've found. Um, so I don't want to set hairs running unnecessarily with respect to Nama, but we, once we know what we've got, we can then start to work out how we can best exploit it. Okay. Mark Learmonth, thank you for sharing the Caledonia story with us today. Thank you. Thank you.